pretty much through high school I knew history was definitely my my favorite subject um, and it was always the sort of the the assignments I left as sort of a treat to myself getting through chemistry and things like that. Well, as an undergraduate I read history and then stayed on to do research. I really liked doing history in school and then I was going through the Oxford websites and seeing the courses and I just, I, I was always interested in the more political aspects of history so I thought, okay, that's a, that sounds like a cool combination. I sort of evolved uh, into, into, into teaching politics. If you, you know, feel like you want to make a difference in some way or you, at least you want to know how a difference is made, then um, politics is definitely worth studying. You really can put together either a very sort of focused course where you, you, you pick things that dovetail um, with each other, or you can choose to be absolutely off the wall and do sort of medieval um, history with modern international relations. One of the nicest courses I did was in first year was called Theories of the State, which was political philosophy but in historical context. So that was a sort that belonged to the history department, but it was very much political theory. The first year course is constructed in a quite a broad way and therefore allows different college tutors to follow different interests. There are no bridge papers because there is enough natural overlap. Politics is much more um, focused on, big, on theories and how they explain the nitty-gritty historical details. It's about not only the narrative, but about how you know how you piece together contradictory evidence, and that you can't just pick and choose, and you have you do have to present the past full of its contradictions. There are lectures in the mornings for all papers, not more than two hours a day. So it's very much it, the time is very much organized by the students. Because of the compulsory thesis requirement, more people probably end up by doing history, a bit more history than they do, they do politics. You have the summer after your second year to really sit down and start reading around a topic that you find interesting. For me, it was, um, it was Margaret Thatcher and her European policy. My thesis was about the early years of Greece and the European Union. Um, I did research for it over the summer in Greece which was really fun. Most colleges have a travel fund that would allow you to, as they did for me, you know, to spend the summer in Edinburgh in the Thatcher archive. You have to sort of learn how to think in terms of two different ways of thinking, which is a bit more difficult, but ultimately rewarding. I came here to do a language school when I was 14 and I absolutely fell in love with the city. The reputation of the university is, is I think, drew me initially to it. Um, and then when you start looking at it, the, the resources they have, not just the tutorial system but also the libraries, the students, and then other facilities like a language centre, the sports facilities, you know, that sort of thing you don't necessarily find everywhere. I think the strength of the history and politics degree is that you can draw on I, what I think is the largest history department in the country, as well as the largest politics department. And so in terms of the breadth of options that, 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 that you can choose from, you have you know, experts over a very, very wide, wide range indeed. I haven't had to buy a single textbook from my course because the libraries are so, so extensive, both in college and in the, the department libraries, that I, can f I could find every single book I ever needed. I did a a paper my first year where I had to read through Spanish texts and so I signed up for a, a Spanish course at the Language Centre. The next year I enrolled in a French for historians, you know. The biggest advantage of, of the Oxford education is probably the tutorial system. It's really amazing how much attention undergraduates get in this university and it's quite unique to have one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one meetings with someone who's written half the books in the reading list. At first it was very intimidating to be sitting in a room across from an expert and having to present your what seems like at the time a quite meagre effort at getting into a subject. Some tutors, uh, and I'm one of them, still stick with 
the idea that people read out their essay to the tutor and then if there's a second or third person in the tutorial they will hand their essay in and the tutor will, will read it. I personally think that the, the reading out of an essay is, is a good discipline. Um, if an essay can't be understood when being listened to it doesn't have a proper structure. It's a style of learning that you really can't just do with reading, you know, there is something added in the tutorial. A big transition from school to college is being given a reading list that you cannot physically sort of read. <laughs> you can read forever, right? <laughs> you can read forever and um, there is no end to the to the debate, to the ongoing academic, academic debate and a lot of the things that you're looking at in your tutorials. So there's picking and choosing and there's sort of skimming through text and that's a technique that, that you evolve as you go through your studies. Oxford works people very hard. People write, they produce much more work. Um, they, they do more writing, they get more feedback. Getting to interact with someone who knows who knows the big picture, and you've basically spent a week trying to, you know, get an impression of the big picture, but they can set you straight where you've gone wrong and engage you in a way that you and another student who've only spent the week talking about things could never reach. I started my degree having done history at school, so I could do history essays very easily, and then politics, sort of, all these big theor theoretical approaches seem to be a bit it, hard to understand because they obviously couldn't explain all the nitty-gritty facts so I couldn't understand what they were for but then as I, I, I went through the course I sort of I started understanding how they bring out the essence of maybe the nitty-gritty detail and I, I started thinking in terms of theories. With every week I have a greater understanding of how little I know. People often say you know what should I do to prepare for a politics interview and I usually say, you know, take an interest in the world around you. I took a week off school and I travelled to Oxford to do the interview and it was not, it was not at all a very, very dramatic experience. The tutors attempt to, to get into your brain and to sort of see how you work through problems that are unfamiliar to you. It's not really about whether you know anything about, uh, you know, why the Great Depression happened. The interviews tend to be trying to start discussions on themes that everybody might you know, have something to say on. And then there's never a right answer that's being looked for. What there is, is sort of a capacity of analytical thinking. They were not scary really at all, but it was an example for me of how a tutorial would look like if I were at the university. It's really looking for, for, you know, for intellectual dexterity and focus rather than uh, previous knowledge. So you won't get asked facts, um, but if you make a generalisation about something, you might be asked if you can you know, quote a fact that actually backs up uh, what you're asserting. Be yourself at the interview and remember that you, you will be interviewed by hopefully your future tutor and they want to see if you're sort of capable of having a conversation with them and that's all it is. I found out I got in a couple days before Christmas, so that was, that was very nice, I was very happy. I called my mum and I called my best friend and I was extremely happy. <laughs> it was a great moment, yeah, it was a, going to Oxford was a dream come true. This subject can lead you to, obviously there's no vocational element, so it can really lead you wherever you want to go. So I'm going to do a, a master's degree at International Studies, it's called, it's multidisciplinary, at Johns Hopkins University. I'm doing further study in history um, here <laughs> at Oxford. I c can think of people who've gone into uh, consultancy and are working um, for high pay in the city. I can think of those who've gone on to do uh, academic work. People do seem to, you know, to, to, to find things to do, um, interesting things to do when they've done the degree. The people you meet here who are equally enthusiastic about their course, the tutors who are as enthusiastic about their subject as you are, um, and then and just the huge variety of experiences and 
interests of the student body and the people you meet just sitting in the dining hall or on the swim team or in your language class, you know, that is stimulating.